new court documents have revealed that certain police officers in California have teamed up with neo-Nazi groups in order to go after anti-fascist activists. Now, these court documents are devastating. According to The Guardian, California police investigating a violent white nationalist event worked with white supremacists in an order uh, in an effort to identify counter protesters and had sought the prosecution of activists with so called anti racist beliefs. Now, the records, which showed officers expressing uh, sympathy with white supremacists and, had, uh, and were trying to protect neo uh, Nazi organizers' identity, were included in a court briefing from three anti fascist activists who were charged with felonies after protesting at a Sacramento rally. Now, these defendants were there. Uh, and they were urging the judge to dismiss their case and accuse California police and prosecutors of a cover-up and collusion with fascists. Wow. Now, uh, one of the organizers uh, who's charged with assault and rioting uh, after participating in the June 2016 uh, rally, um, this is Yvette Falarka. Uh, she is a Berkeley teacher, as I said. Uh, she said it was... It is shocking and really angering to see the level of collusion and the amount of, to which the police covered up for the Nazis. Now, during that rally, it's important to note that she was stabbed and bludgeoned by a white supremacist. She adds, The people who were victimized by the Nazis were then victimized by the police and the district attorneys. Now the cops are like, Oh, no, no, of course not. We're not working with them. No, 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 no. Look, hey, we even arrested one. One of them, but mostly we have went after anti-fascist activists. <laughs> now, here's the thing, right? You might be asking, look, okay, so are they actually working with uh, the, the neo-Nazis? I mean, look, there's, these are strong allegations, right? So what proof, what evidence does they have? Uh, does they, do they have? Falarka's attorneys obtained numerous examples of CHP officers working directly with the TWP. Now, what is the TWP? That is the Traditionalist Workers Party. Now, that is an actual fascist organization. They are neo-Nazis. Now, these examples cited uh, show officers treating white nationalist groups as victims while treating anti-fascists as suspects. Now, the TWP, according to The Guardian, is intimately allied with neo-Nazi and other hardline racist organizations and advocates for racially pure nations. This is according to a description by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now, its leaders had reportedly praised Trump, and the group claimed to bring more than 100 people to the Charlottesville white supremacist rally, where a counter-protester, Heather Heyer, was unfortunately killed. So, now, you're wondering, like I said, about the proof, right? Here's an example of how they work together. In one phone call with Doug McCormick, identified by police as the TWP, uh, TWP affiliate, who acquired the permit for the Sacramento rally, CHP investigator Donovan Ayers warned him that police might have to release his name in response to a public records request. The officer had reportedly said that he would try to protect McCormick. Quote, I'm going to suggest that we hold or, or that we hold that or redact your name or something until this gets resolved. He said, I don't know who had requested records of the permit, and said, if I did know, I would tell you. Now, wait a minute. Why, why would you do that? Why would you go and, and, and say, look, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Who, I, I, like, I want to protect your identity from an open records request on who got the permit. We think you might be in danger. Now, here's the thing. Iris reports noted that McCormick was armed at that rally with a knife. But wait a minute. There were activists at that rally who were stabbed. Coincidence? Maybe. Now, the officer's write-up about an African-American anti-fascist activist included a photo of him at the hospital after the rally and noted that he had been stabbed in the abdomen, chest, and hand. Now, that doesn't mean uh, McCormick was the one who stabbed him, but it's pretty obvious that the activist didn't stab himself. Just throwing that out there. Now, Ayers treated the protester like a suspect in this investigation, trying to find out who stabbed. So you get stabbed, 
and by somebody and and, and look uh, in a, in a rally versus uh, these people who are fascists, right? Who are neo Nazi protesters. So they come into contact. People get stabbed. The guy with the knife is being protected, but the guy who got stabbed, he's a suspect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me go to the Guardian. They said the police investigator recommended the man be charged. The one who was stabbed with 11 offenses, including disturbing the peace, conspiracy, assault, unlawful assembly, and wearing a mask to evade police. As evidence, Ayers provided Facebook photos of the man holding up his fist. The officer wrote the man's black power salute and his support for anti-racist activism demonstrated his intent and motivation to violate the civil rights of the neo-Nazi group. This is the cop. Uh, how dare you violate the civil rights? You had an intent because you held up your fist and that you don't like racists. We got to charge him. We got to charge him. He was intent to violate the civil rights. But what about the civil rights of counter-protesters? Look, man, in America, neo-Nazis do have a right to protest. And to hold marches, of course. And so do the protesters. And look, due to the volatile nature of both sides, you're going to have some... Uh, I shouldn't say volatile nature of both sides, but just the fact that you get these two sides together, they are going to have some conflict. There will be some volatility. Now, both sides are not the same. One side says, I don't like you... Uh, Based on the color of your skin, I want to hurt you and kill you. The other side says, no, we don't accept that. I'm on the side of uh, the anti-fascists on this one, as you would think most Americans would be. But not these police officers. These police officers are coddling the neo-Nazis. Amazing. Amazing. Now, Ayers also... Uh, his report also noted Falarka's political activism in great detail, referencing her activism on behalf of students of color and women's rights protests. Oh my God, how dare you defend students of color and protest for women's rights? You must also be a dangerous radical who, are, who is there to, uh, and you must be violent and you must be only there to disrupt the civil rights of these fine upstanding white supremacists. Give me a break. Now, here's another example. Officers also work with TWP member Derek Pineo to try to identify anti-fascist activists according to recordings that were uh, revealed in court. Officers interviewed Pineo in jail after he was arrested for an unrelated domestic violence charge. What a great guy. Audio recordings captured uh, investigators saying that they brought photos to show him, hoping he could help them identify anti-fascist activists so this guy gets put into uh you know gets arrested over an unrelated charge just you know domestic violence and all that and these cops say hey this is a perfect idea to go because we know you're a neo-nazi we're going to try to use you to go after anti-fascist activists the officers allegedly told him quote we're pretty much going after them we're looking at you as a victim you're the victim. You're in jail for domestic violence. You're a neo-Nazi. But don't worry. You're a victim. T Amazing. Now, Ayer's report also noted that Pineo was armed with a knife at the same neo-Nazi rally and that one stabbing victim told officers he believed Pineo was responsible. Now, using video footage, Ayer's also uh, noted that Pineo was in the vicinity of another victim at the time he was injured. But that officer ultimately said that the evidence was not clear that he was involved. Now, Ayer's report also included images and names of other three, uh, three other TWP-affiliated uh, men who said that they were armed with knives, but who also faced no charges. Now, this isn't the only time that police have been accused of working with and on the behalf of neo-Nazi groups. Last year, U.S. prosecutors targeting anti-Trump protesters in Washington, D.C. relied on vis video evidence from a far-right group with a record of using deceptive tactics. 
At an Oregon alt-right event, police allowed a member of a right-wing militia-style group to help officers arrest an anti-fascist activist. Police in Charlottesville were also accused of standing by the Nazis, or of standing by as Nazis, attacked protesters, and a, ba- a black man who was badly beaten by white supremacists was later charged with a felony. Look, now why would police officers help neo-Nazis? Probably because some of those officers hold those same views. Now, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them are. <laughs> It's not all, at all surprising to realize that law enforcement groups have some of these people in them. Because look, what's one thing that uh, these neo-Nazi groups want to do? They want to be in law enforcement. Why? Well, why wouldn't you want to be in charge of the law? <laughs> I mean, this kind of power is very, very attractive to hate groups. You can't run afoul of the law if you are the law. So, hey man, that makes sense. And look, traditionally... A lot of police groups, law enforcement group, have been on the same side as white supremacist groups, for example, against civil rights. You have civil rights activists back in the 60s getting sprayed with fire hoses and attacked by dogs. So, yes, they have always traditionally been against minorities and civil rights activists. It's a good old boys club, and it always has been. So is this really surprising? No. Look, police were originally created as the original slave patrols. Now, that's not to say that all police are bad and that all of them are racist. No, no. There are people that get into policing with good intentions. And some of those same officers leave, poli- leave the uh, departments because they realize how bad it actually is inside the departments. And some do uh, stay in and try to change the culture from within. So there are good cops out there. But there's also a lot, a lot of bad ones. And so I think one uh, thing that would help is if the good cops were actually calling out the bad cops and not being complicit or not staying silent because silence is complicit, uh, is being complicit. So we need to do something about this. Uh, And and look, there's been a lot of warnings of right wing groups that have extreme anti-racist views trying to get into higher places in in both the military and police departments. So I think anybody who has these views shouldn't be allowed to be a police officer. How are you going to serve and protect the public if you hate half of them or you hate a majority of them? So you absolutely need to not allow these people to be police officers, you know, If that involves going into your social media, doing a background check and things like that, okay, that's what we got to do. But things have got to change because we can't have a, a, a department that is working with horrific people to try and take down people who are actually defending minorities and defending civil rights and things like that. That is not what the police are there for. Police are there, are supposed to be there to protect and serve. And it's pretty apparent that right now, in a lot of cases, they are not doing so. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.